Hello guys and welcome to my channel Paki Doc. Today we are going to be talking about the thoracolumbar injury classification and severity score. So if a person has some kind of an injury, they have a history of fall from a stairs or from the ceiling or from the roof or terrace or whatever and um, or there could be a road traffic accident, whatever the cause. Uh, uh you see the patient and you treat them according to the advanced trauma life support guidelines but after doing the primary uh, survey you have to move to the secondary survey and the secondary survey consists of uh, deciding whether a person needs surgery or not what kind of surgery what uh, kind of surgical approaches are available for what type of fractures we're going to discuss that in a, in a separate video Today's video is going to be all about the T-legs, whether a person is a surgical patient or has to be managed conservatively. So this is uh, determined by this score, which is the thoracolumbar injury classification and severity score. So it, <clears throat> this score is basically um, divided into three parts. We have to look at the radiology of the patient, the neurology of the patient, and this part, the integrity of the posterior lig ligamentous complex, this also has to be understood and evaluated. So coming to the radiographic findings, there are different types of fractures or injuries written over here. If you look at the AO classification, the American orthopedic classification, <clears throat> There are so many uh, types of fractures that uh, you would be confused. So what they have done is they have taken the main main headings and given them points. I will discuss these fractures with you. But before we discuss the fractures, again, we have to understand the easy, the basics, which are, which include the spinal anatomy. And uh, if we take the vertebral column, then uh, we can understand that it is composed of a series of motion segments. Now, what is a motion segment? A motion segment consists of two adjacent vertebrae, their intervertebral discs, and the ligamentous restraints. All right. So this is one whole uh, motion segment. And then we have to understand that some parts of the spine are more susceptible to injury. They are called the transitional zones where the, cerv uh, the cervical spine meets the thoracic spine, where the thoracic spine meets the lumbar, lumbar spine. So these points are more susceptible to injury as they are junctional points or transitional zones. Frequency, um, usually in traumatic spinal cord injuries, uh, there are cervical and number injuries, but 15 to 20 percent uh, injuries occur at the thoracolumbar junction, and the rest 9 to 16 percent are in the thoracic spine. Now, uh, why are there so little uh, thoracic spine injuries? This is the question which often comes, and the answer is very easy. And the answer is that basically there is the a restraining effect of the rib cage which uh, makes the thoracic spine rigid and stiff okay and uh, there are thinner intervertebral discs of the uh, thoracic spine so both of these factors uh, make the thoracic spine rigid and this means that any force that is um, acting on the patient making him fall whatever the cause uh this force is transmitted down to the lumbar regions this is why most injuries are either in the lumbar region or in the cervical neck region <clears throat> also um coming to the biomechanics of this uh, motion segment this uh, vertebral body is the prime load bearing structure the disc transfers all forces applied to the adjacent bodies. Whereas this posterior longitudinal complex, this 
um, has basically many parts. We'll discuss it later. But this part is the weak link. And many times we see fractures over here in the posterior uh, or dorsal tendinous complex. All right. <clears throat> okay. So now after that, we come to the three column model of Dennis. Usually, uh, we consider the spine to consist of three parts, anterior column, the middle column and the posterior column. The anterior column consists of the anterior half of the disc and body and the uh, <coughs> annulus fibrosus anterior part. Along with it will be the anterior longitudinal ligament. The anterior longitudinal ligament is very thick and very stable. Okay, now we come to the middle column. The middle column consists of the posterior half of the disc and the body. Along with it comes the posterior part of the annulus fibrosus and the posterior longitudinal ligament. This is also a part of the middle column. Now the posterior column not to be confused with the posterior tendinous complex. The posterior column consists of the posterior arch of the vertebra, posterior ligamentous complex. Okay. So what is this posterior longitudinal complex? It consists of the interspinous ligament, the supraspinous ligament, the facet joints and its capsule and along with it will be the ligamentum flavum. We'll discuss it later as well. Now we come to the McAfee classification uh, which has uh, many types but uh, we are going to uh, describe it in four types because we are not going to go in the complex details we are going for the simplified McAfee classification so the first type is the compression fraction fracture in which the anterior column is compressed in the burst fracture there is compression in the anterior and middle middle columns. The posterior column is intact. In the seat belt type of fracture, there may be mild compression or it may be intact, but in the middle and posterior columns, there is distraction. We'll discuss each and everything later. Just You just need to know <clears throat> which column is affected in which fracture. And then there is fracture dislocation in which all three columns are somehow or the other involved. <clears throat> so the first type of fracture is the compression fracture. Compression is any force that is pushing inside. Okay, it is coming inside. If it is a shearing force or a tense, uh, sorry, a ten, uh, if there is tension, then this force will be like this going up. This will be pulling it down somehow as if it were an, if it were elastic the vertebral body under tension would elongate but a similar um, but on the other hand if it is a compressive force it would shorten okay i hope you're getting the picture compression fracture uh, happens usually in the anterior column only okay and the middle column is intact and it acts as a fulcrum in this type of fracture, the posterior height of the vertebral body is maintained, but the anterior height is lessened and it looks like a wedge. So this is also called a wedge deformity or wedge fracture. Usually there is no neurological deficit associated with these fractures. Now we come to the burst fracture. Now the burst fracture uh, also comes from compression of the vertebral body. But there is compression not just on the anterior column but also on the middle column. It results in five types of uh, fractures and they are all collectively called burst fractures. So the first type 
is where both end plates are destroyed like fractured okay in type b subtype b only the superior end plate is fractured and in type c only the inferior end plate is fractured this is very rare but the superior end plate fractured subtype b is very common the most common you can get tell you can say okay and then there are types d and subtypes e and d okay in this there is some element of rotation okay for example if this was the alignment of the spine one of them has rotated to the side and then there is type e some element of scoliosis is there and this is called flexion all right so these were all burst fractures now we come to um, the seat belt fractures also called the chance fracture basically to be honest the bony chance fracture is the horizontal fracture at one level purely through the bone splitting the <clears throat> sorry uh, splitting the spinous process the lamina the pedicles and the body okay this is a chance fracture in which there is tearing of the bones in a single line like this the spinous process the uh, pedicle the lamina and the vertebral body this is a chance fracture the other type is a flexion distraction type of a fracture which occurs through the soft tissues okay it is also a horizontal fracture but it will tear the ligaments all right then we have some um, fracture dislocation type of fractures in these fractures again there are subtypes but the main thing to remember is that all three columns have failed due to compression tension rotation or shearing forces okay and these are the subtypes but you just have to remember that this in this all three columns are affected so in the points are given according to the type of fracture you see on the x-ray next comes the neurology if it is intact there are zero points the root injury and complete spinal cord injury have two points each whereas incomplete and corda equina have three three points each we are going to discuss these in separate videos. Lastly comes the integrity of the spine of the posterior ligamentous complex. It may be intact or maybe you are suspecting it but don't know for sure or there is definite injury. So what is this posterior ligamentous complex? <coughs> this is a part right we discussed it in the start of the video as well. So the posterior ligamentous complex contains the ligamentum flavum the interspinous ligament, the facet capsule, the supraspinous ligament. All right, all four of these things make up the posterior ligamentous complex. If it is intact, then the uh, the favor the it favors non-surgical treatment. So in the end, when you are left with the total points, you have seen a patient, examined him, gotten an X-ray or CT or MRI whichever one you like and you've checked their neurology you get points right if it is between 0 and 3 then mostly the uh, outcome will be um, uh, I mean the patient will manage uh, conservatively if it is 4 then it is surgeon's choice and if it is greater than 4 then surgery is indicated but remember uh, these are just guidelines you have to look at the patient and if you see any neurological deficit you have to operate so i hope it made the, made a few things clear and if you have any questions or would like more videos uh, related to trauma and all that please let me know in the comment box thank you and allah peace